Today is October the 31st, 2022. It's a Monday and I'm getting ready to put some IV fluids into my dog. She has chronic kidney failure and one of the keys to treatment is to give her sub-Q fluids and IV fluids to support her kidneys, to keep them functioning as well as they can while she goes through this progressively de degenerative disease. So she's got uh, stage one to stage two kidney failure. And uh, so I'm gonna hook her up right now and just let you see how I do it. Okay, buddy, hang on. Okay, I've got this line, this uh, catheter line is purged of air. I've got the IV uh, fluid line, the drip line. It is also purged of air. It's ready to be hooked up. All I need to do now is, uh, actually there is a bubble in the catheter from the veterinarian. So there's a bubble in here and I'm going to try to remove it because it's a pretty big one. So hang on just one second. This has already been sanitized, this nipple. And this has been purged of air, this uh, syringe. So let me see if I can in any way suck out that uh, air drop. I mean air bubble. There's an air bubble right here in this catheter, right at the end of this needle. So let me see what I can do here. Okay, so I've got that air, I've got that air bubble. I, I took it out in this syringe, so I'm going to have to uh, change the needle on this syringe. Let me get that done real quick. I'll open, I'll open up another syringe and take the needle off of it. Okay, and I'm gonna re-sanitize this uh, needle here on the, I mean the injection port on the catheter. I'm using 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol for that. And so I've got this uh, lactated ringer solution in this syringe ready to go. I'll let the alcohol dry just for a second and then I'm gonna flush this catheter. It's got a little blood in it because I drew the, uh, that air bubble out so the blood came out of, in, out of her vein and into the catheter to take up that space. So hang on one second. Let me double check to make sure there are no air bubbles in here. Okay, it's ready to go. I am now gonna purge this, uh, I'm gonna flush this catheter. Okay, so I'm flushing it, the blood is leaving it. Okay, so I am finished with this syringe, I'm gonna toss it. I don't want it around and it'll never be used again. I'm going to take this IV line. I'm going to take off the cap from the uh, catheter feed line. I'm going to start a slight drip on the IV line. Okay, so I've got fluid coming out. I'm going to make sure there's no air bubble, so I'll, I'll load, overload this uh, catheter port here. So there's no air, no air in there now. It's safe, nice and safe. So what I need to do now is I've got the, uh, I've got the I, IV line dripping actively, so I am now going to open, I'm going to open this uh, clip so that the uh, fluid can, the lactated ringers can start flowing into my dog. Okay, there it is. So that is done. That's goody good. She's a great dog. She just happened to have a high blood pressure and the high blood pressure destroyed her kidneys. So if you've got a dog and you wanna keep your dog from, you know, having a possible internal organ damage from blood pressure, you've gotta get that blood pressure checked at your veterinarian. Get it checked at least once a year. And make sure they do the test four or five times each session, each session that they check it. Because dogs are very nervous and they're 
trying to get their blood pressure accurately is uh, difficult. So you have to average, you know, you have to take five, six, seven readings and just get a good average of all of the readings and see what the high number, the, high, the systolic number is for your dog. This dog had 220, 225 systolic when we had her blood pressure checked. So anyway, that's it. And uh, thanks for watching.